So, thank you for coming this morning. I'm Masao Iwagami. And I'm presenting about case study of a medication harm assessment, uh, introducing these two papers published as part of my PhD, supervised by Ian. So let me remind you of the schedule of this short course, in which my presentation is located in the middle. And I hope my presentation will be complementary to Ian's talk on Wednesday and in the afternoon, Friday afternoon. Okay, so let me briefly introduce myself. So I graduated from medical degree 10 years ago and doing junior residency and senior residency in Tokushukai Shonan Kamakura General Hospital, the same as Seki Sensei in the pharmacopoeia department in Kyoto. And then I decided to study public health in 2012 in the University of Tokyo, and then decided to study abroad. And they first entered MSc master course in epidemiology in London School of Hygiene, which is now coordinated by Ian. And then decided to go to PhD named Epidemiology and Population Health and belonging to Electronic Health Records Research Group. And this is me and this is Ian. And I spent four years to finish my PhD. And I came back to Japan last year and now an assistant professor of Tsukuba in the Department of Health Services Research and also assisting distance learning courses of pharmacoepidemiology and non-communicable disease epidemiology in London School of Hygiene from this year. So if you have any questions, give me your questions or comments during my presentation or in the end, either in Japanese or in English. So my presentation is about to estimate and interpret prevalence of drug use, incidence, indication, in a particular group of patient. And also, I'm estimating relative risk of a drug and absolute risk increase or uh, excess risk of a drug for one adverse drug event using my example of UK primary care data and chronic kidney disease or CKD population and antidepressants and gastrointestinal bleeding. So this is just my example, but I hope that you will apply my methods to your own research using another example, such as Japanese JAMDAC database, diabetes population, antibiotics and heart disease, and so on. So as shown here, I had a lot of difficulties or obstacles I faced during my PhD. And in every step, I had to make a decision to overcome this difficulty. So I will show you honestly my thinking process and how I overcame this individual difficulty. And I believe that I think that it may not be 100% correct or accurate decision, but I hope that I mean this my thinking process will help your future decision making in your own research. Okay, first questions to research questions, by which I mean the start of my research was when I was doing senior residency. I was consulted by a junior residency where the antidepressants can be prescribed for patients with chronic kidney disease, pre-dialysis chronic kidney disease, who may be depressed or just sick. So at that time, I didn't have any answer to this question. But suddenly this came to my mind at the beginning of my PhD, and then decided to tackle with this research question. But you know, this is just question, so not a research question yet. So according to these great books written by Fukuhara Sensei in Kyoto, I rephrased this research question, this question to a kind of research question. What is the risk benefit balance of antidepressants? And then I split this into two. What is a benefit and what is a risk? Because as Ian suggested in on Wednesday, we don't have to examine benefit and risk in a single big study, but this could be separate. So 
benefit may be more suitable to be assessed by RCT or clinical trial, while risk could be assessed by electronic health records or real-world data, especially among patients with kidney disease who are often excluded from clinical trials. Then, by focusing on the risk side of antidepressants, this is, you know, PECO, by which I mean among patients with CKD, comparing antidepressants and no antidepressants on the adverse drug events such as GI bleeding and fracture. So this is the research question in my second paper. And before this, I was interested in the basic statistics. What is the prevalence, incidence, and indication of antidepressants? It's a kind of drug utilization study as my first paper. Okay, so for the coming four slides, let me briefly introduce what is UK primary care database. So in the UK, there is primary care gatekeeper system or GP system in which almost all, pe all people in the UK, uh, excuse me, living in the UK are required to be registered to GPs to receive universal health care for free, and as I did during my PhD, staying in London. And by this system, the same GP records a patient's information in primary care, secondary care, I mean referral or specialist consultation, hospitalization and death. So in theory, a patient can be followed up continuously for his or her life. And there are 7,000 general practices in the UK, and one general practice holds one or more GPs. And this is just an example, Regent's Park general practice, which I belonged to during my stay in London. And this is another example, Acton general practice. There is kind of Japanese town in London, and this is Acton. Okay, so clinical data, practice data, research data link, or CPRD, is one of the several databases in the UK. And CPRD includes data from 700 general practices using the same software provider system, and representing 7% of the UK population in terms of age, age and sex. This is the example of women. That age distribution is very similar between CPRD and UK census, or Jinko, Jinko Dotai Toke in the UK. But it's not representing geography and socioeconomic status because CPRD started from London. And density, or the number of participating in CPRD, is higher in London and northern area in the UK. And another strength of the database is linkage to inpatient database as well as cancer registry and myocardial infarction registry for 60% of the cases in CPRD. And this is a kind, kind of data structure of CPRD, which may be similar to Japanese JAMDAC database. So for example, a woman born in 1965 registered in August 24th, 2004, in practice number 189 in East London of England. If she visits GP on November 21st, 2012, a doctor or GP diagnosed her as having urinary tract infection and some extent of dehydration and prescribed antibiotic Trimetoprim in this example for five days. I mean, 10 divided by two. And if GP measured and recorded blood pressure, this is also recorded, but not every time. So like this, the data are stored separately. And if researchers want to do a study, so they split and merge these data sets into a single data set for analysis, like we do in Japanese JAMDAC database. And another strength of CPRD may be it has a range of lifestyle related factors and vital signs and blood tests. But the data is not for everyone. So, so even after, I mean, 2004, the smoking, 
was recorded for 95%, while blood pressure, BMI, alcohol were recorded for lower proportion of patients. And total cholesterol, like blood test, is even lower. So how to deal with missing data may be more important and difficult. Although I don't have time to talk about missing data today. And in terms of diagnosis recording, in 2004, there was a kind of incentive system for GPs to record more accurate diagnosis was introduced in 2004, quality outcome framework, so that diagnosis records, recording of such as diabetes and heart failure improved very much. So that most researchers these days tend to use data after 2004, as I did for my PhD. So I used data from 2004 to 2014. Okay, do you have any questions so far? <laughs>